carved in the hills. Okay, but yeah, I, I've been there before. And, and you've seen pictures of it, right? Okay. So three Negroes been there. That's great. <laughs> but it wasn't in 1971, nothing like that. It was last week or something right. when they made it legal for niggas to travel. Because when I was traveling, it, you would very seldom find a black person. And you definitely wouldn't find one in Peru or Ecuador or nowhere, <laughs> or Africa. Well, the African students used to come and I remember Gwendolyn Brooks. You remember Gwendolyn Brooks? The poet, great poet. We had dinner with her one night at an Indian restaurant of all places. And it was, I was a little homesick and I was a young guy. So I went up and gave her a big kiss. You know, and everybody said, oh, you know. Anyway, but I'd have never met her here because I was too busy. You know what I mean? All the civil rights leaders that was over here Civil rights, I could meet them all over there because they was going to come over for an African visit. The point I'm going to skip, the point is adventure. People like to read adventure stories, but adventure means you got to get out of your comfortable seat and your TV thing, you know, you got to throw your TV guide away and go to those places. A lot of people don't do that. But when you do that, you have adventure. Real, I mean, adventure is stimulating. Anybody that think that what we're doing right now is not stimulating got the wrong idea. It's stimulating, right? And I know what's going on. I know we got boss man on the hook. He ain't got us on the hook. Yeah, he, 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 he doing a little reason. He do, he's the whole government. But he's not in control. When I talked about the generals before, and I talked about all kind of, I talked about Savik. Savik. Okay, I want you to think about America and think about all the influences. Think about a country that knows that they never uh, get any peace from the other country. Suppose they do some research, just suppose. And they say, I wonder how much money it would cost, cost to put such and such in a position. And who could we get that is mean enough and stupid enough to do our bidding and how much would it cost? It could be governments like Russians, it could be anybody else. They could have, I mean, when I say anybody, a government could say, hmm, hey, I know you're broke, we'll give you $10 million. You go and destroy the Republican Party, and while you're at it, destroy America. What the heck? get the heat off us, right? Think about it. We're talking about on governmental levels now. Please don't write it off that that ain't possible. Well, it not only is possible, probably is more likely. Because the stuff we see on the surface, right? Like I told my kids, I said, when I look what's going on on the, on the outside, I also, that lets me know what's going on on the backside. In other words, if I was looking at things, I could tell, hmm, something going on back there. And remember, we always talked about second level and third level. Always. It don't make no difference. What happened? We're going to act on the surface. Oh, da, 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 da. But remember, the ex savic ages. They may be around a while. And they said, well, we got to join up with somebody. Some would join up with boss man. That's the best way to join. They go down and say, well, I'm going to solve up really. 
some will look at a ship and they say, what's the name of that ship? Oh, that's the USS Titanic. Well, they're just making an analysis. They don't take but one or two and they say, hmm, the USS Titanic. Well, where the hell is it going to the bottom? Right? You send the children out to get slaughtered and ran crazy. How many crazy people in that third, in them Gulf Wars? The first Gulf War, the people came back crazy, depleted uranium, they said we're crazy. The women was having that down Texas everywhere, birth defect, children like they was having in Iraq. Nothing is wrong with you. You take a couple of aspirins and get a little rest. That's what they told them. They told them that in English, here in America. Hey, there's nothing wrong with you. We don't have nothing shows up here. It doesn't matter. What about the third or fourth go round? By the time they didn't do the Iraq, by the time they didn't do the Afghanistan. How many generals talked against? boss man. All of them did. Everyone did. And these ain't little bitty boys. Colin Powell is respected by the system. Right? And General Mother Gubble. Oh, Mad Dog, look at here. Mad Dog is like, uh, he's a soldier, soldier. That's what they call it. He's a soldier. The soldiers like him, and he liked him. He's an American, but he's, you ain't, that ain't not, no way to run no business. Hey, man, look, we're on the right side of history, and they're not, that's all there is to it. It don't make no difference whether you believe it or like it or not. It doesn't make any difference. And anybody needs any more proof, anybody needs more proof than what's going on now, they not, I ain't gonna talk about nobody, but they not sold up real good. They not, <laughs> anybody that needs more proof about the direction this is going, uh, well, anyway, they just need more proof. I'll put, leave it at that. Stalingrad to Oakland. Remember, this is a collective of ideas, thoughts, and things. This is not a one, two, three, four. So if I go from here to that, that's fine today because that's what this is. But it'll wind up making plenty of sense. So when we return to Oakland, we will return as the nation's experts on police brutality, on general fitna, on the Muslims and who they are, where they are, and everything else. This is not bragging, but you know all the lecture series they have, you can pop up YouTube, you can get this professor, that professor, and all that stuff. Okay. Listen to 10 or 12 of them and all of what they got to say. Just spend a couple of weeks listening to them and see if any of them, any one of them, make as much sense as we do and is as accurate as we are. Some are very good. I ask y'all to listen to Kishu Morabani or whatever. The other. He was very close to what we talk about. But asking him about sudden, some other subject he don't know nothing about. We are more comprehensive, more balanced, and if somebody is evil equal to, ain't nobody on that circuit better. I've listened for the last, I don't know how long. I listened to two or three of them a, a, a day. I just lay down listening to them. And I learned something from them. The main thing I learned that they don't know nothing. They know, they didn't read and they don't know what adds up to what. They can't add, make it add up properly. 
You see what I mean? Uh, some of them are very close to right on some things, but how? What do you do then? If you're right, what do you do? They don't. None of them have no. We're gonna do this. We're gonna make this run. I'm trying to tell you, we we're in a serious position. The wind is behind our back. Okay, other people will recognize it in a couple of months. I feel like this is one of those times you can tell the wind is picking up to push things here and there. Okay, that's fine. But it ain't no big deal to us. Remember, everything we're saying, we're saying right now, when, let's say there's nothing to lose, nothing to gain, and if I wasn't saying it to y'all, just been listening to it all the time, it would sound a little stretched out. I think, but maybe not. Like the little girl said uh, <laughs> the other day at the, at the, when we was outside. I said, no, nah, I don't look fuzzy wuzzy and I don't seem and the little girl, she might have been lying because definitely at least half the people there in the police, you have to take that into account. Yeah, you look for that. I said, well, thank you. I sure do uh, like that show. Feels good. Right? To have a little tender talking about you. You look fuzzy, wasn't it? Me? Maybe you do. You may look like their great grandfather or somebody that used to coddle them. I don't know. So it was nice. Okay. Show. Continues, show America. Show America how it's done. Continuous evolution. That's very important. That's technically our job. And we done done, we've always done our job. And uh, something we talked about in the lecture the other day, we don't look for perfection, we look for beauty. If you look perfection in the human being, you're in a lot of trouble. If you look for perfection in nature, instead of beauty, you can find beauty everywhere, but you can't find a whole lot of, of course the earth is put together and all that is put together perfectly. Mizan, balance, but you see beauty all day, everywhere, all the time. If that's what you're looking for, you see it, you know? Okay, so perfection, uh -uh. but beauty, yes. I just mentioned in the talk before about our little babe cannot become a, victi vic a victim of petty blindness. You can't do it. I little bait here, when we talk about Velayati Faki, I don't know, I haven't heard Velayati Faki come out of not one word or no Shia here. Not a one. Especially the Negroes. And they supposed to be here and go to some Shia joint somewhere. Well, is it possible to find a place that is more Shia supportive than here, that's the question. Well, you've got more books, uh, all of Shia. I give them all books. Excuse me, some Shia books, I got all of them. Right out there. Uh, I got the thing full of books back there, this thing, everything. Full of uh, Alan Bate literature. Now you have to realize that I had that I read about Yusuf alayhi salam, thanking Allah for giving him the ability to ascertain and coordinate historical events and realities, right? Okay. You can hear the most educated people in Iran. And the first thing they say, we sure appreciate Said nobody else picked that up. Once they, they even talking about uh, some of the same people they have copied. They they send for hip hop artists and other uh, Americans. I be down to Daftar and I see. I don't say nothing to them a whole lot, but I say, "Oh, you're going to Iran? You're just an American Negro." 
And I don't believe that was such, I'm like the old Greek guy in the Greek mythology that went around all the time with a lantern, day and night. I said, what are you looking for? Uh, I'm looking for an honest man, right? Now, I'm looking for an honest Negro. You know, not here, but I'm saying, look, I tell the people, I say, if you think the National Negro, they was trying to teach the National Negro about Velayatu Faki. It may be some of the same people that you hear and see, because they're important. And then they said, uh, Imam Musa, a couple of sisters, reporters, all of them around. Imam Musa, is it true that certain people, when they die, they go, they go up on, they go on a mothership, or they go. Up. I say, yes, of course, it's true. It's true. I say, and so and so, when he was in Iraq in '87 and was flying back over here. He was beamed up on the mothership. They took it off the, because uh, it was so funny. You know what I mean? It was like Frederick Douglass is still alive. That's what the National Negro. I had a spiritual experience and I got beamed up uh, right while we was flying back. Lord, I'm mercy. And then I looked up and that was the lamb without spot of blemish. Let me just say Elijah Muhammad. And then I met God in person. That's Farad Muhammad, Pakistani guy. On the mothership. Yes, he did. I'll search for it. I'll find if it kills me. It was it's on tape right now. He said it. He had beamed up. It's in 87, could have been 88, as right in the middle of the changeover, because that was an Islamic program in Iraq, and Saddam Hussein invited the crackpots to come to, couldn't fight, fight no Muslims, and he invited him. And he got beamed up on the way back. Yes, he did. You think I'm lying, we'll, we'll find it, don't worry. Just like we find whatever else we look for, we'll find it. We got beamed up. So I tell some of our friends, I don't labor the point. I said, that's a lost cause. If you find an honest American or a non-police American, I'll have him for dinner. I'll tell you, I'll, I'll either have him there sitting with me or digesting myself. Guess I will. I ain't lying. It's not that, uh, you know, there are, that was a time when dinosaurs lived on earth. You know why? You can see they find the bones all the time. That was a time when it was honest Negroes. They did exist. They, they existed, I'm sure they did. You find their bones around. <laughs> anyway. So I lose bait. Uh, you can tell that there's something going on because of the chatter right now. Okay. So what I say to our friends, you have to be big above madhab. Uh, one friend of mine was telling me, uh, yeah, uh, they're grooming Zarif for the presidency. I said, I didn't tell him, but I gave a lecture in Denver five, six years ago. At least five, I think it's around five or six years. And uh, I told the conference, all the brothers and sisters there, I said, I'm taking care of the defense of this place, country too. Here, I'm doing that. And that no person that's been not just, you know, had certain contacts and that, 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 or served over here in America should be, uh, uh, 
our president. I take that back now. Because, shoot, everybody knows. But the friend I was talking about was a real friend. I know he's a, he is a real friend. But he's in a clique. And his clique is more important than our friendship. I'm telling you, because his clique cut off, he was getting a little support from here and there. The clique cut it off. And I'd visit him, and he would slide me a certain amount of, uh, after the second time, I said, this is the same. I said, this is your salary, isn't it? I said, I'll take it now, but that's it. So I know he's a friend. But there's other Iranians, he told me, person out of his mouth, I hate so-and-so, and I hate, you can't do that. So if he become president, first message I'm going to you can't hate. you got to go give so-and-so a big hug. Whoever it was, he hated him. And there's only a hate him because of the doggone, they have a different program. A different program. One, and the rabbi said he liked so-and-so's program in one of his talks, that same person I'm talking about. Yeah, and then all of a sudden, everybody coming about all fitna, he could do this, he could do that. I said, I don't know about all that. I said, that's my homeboy. Y'all can say what you want. I said, I like him. And you ought to like him too. If you can't help him, don't go work against him. That's Democrats and Republicans. Like the Republicans said about Obama, Obama is the most American president they've had in recent years. Negroes getting blowed up and put away, increased, right? Under Obama. Black Lives Matter started under Obama, not uh, this clown around. Hey, man, the people, they're not thinking. You know, and what did the Republicans say? I'm going to make sure that anything he wants to do, he ain't going to get to do it. I said, man, these people, and, and they're serious about it, just because of different teams. And hypocrisy, when I saw Nancy Pelosi with a kitty cloth and all other, I don't forget all of them, but I said, I quit. I don't have, <laughs> you know, I walk away. I quit. <laughs> it's ridiculous, right? They don't have no shame, they don't have, and they be just doing it like this is fine. I said, man, 